Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 12 of my satisfactory Let's Play for Update 6 and beyond. Now in the last episode we set up both a Sulfur Refinery and a Caterium Refinery and researched a bunch of new items in the MAM. Most importantly, we got ourselves Smart Splitters, which is going to allow the handling of overflow, or if we want to get messy, we could even set up what's called a Sushi Belt, a belt that carries all sorts of different types of goods, and we can just kind of sort it with Smart Splitters later down the line. A controversial belt. A lot of people said in the comments, don't be doing that. It's really messy. You don't want to go that route. Keep it efficient. Keep it clean. We'll see. I've got plans to use it in today's quartz facility, which is what we're going to be building as we had it queued up from our last episode. So in our to-do list, we have expanding the power facility, getting the quartz refinery built, doing more MAM research, and then the space elevator's next phase. So let's get cracking. So basically, since the last episode, I've been just encasing the Caterium factory in a big block of concrete, as I have a habit of doing that. And essentially we have 420 Caterium coming along, or sorry, quick wire being produced and being flooded into this place. So I'm really happy with how it looks. A nice little enclosed, compact, relatively efficient little factory that just produces copious amounts of quick wire very, very quickly. 420 per minute. Now people did mention in the comments that it could do it a little bit quicker if we just overclock things a little bit more and just even out the numbers because there's a little bit of excess ingots that get built up but I'm okay with that, it's fine. Stop it, okay? Is nothing ever enough for you guys? Now, speaking of things that aren't enough, we just don't have enough power so I'm gonna have to cut this off. It's gonna have to be turned off for a little while and actually something we could do right now, thinking about it, is I have 60 plus AI limiters in the bag and I think what we could do is go to our MAM, get research going and get ourselves a power switch. And maybe then instead of having to cut power like this, we can just flick the switch. So there we go, the analysis of a power switch is completed, please choose a new node. So we're not going to get the other stuff anytime soon. Now I've never used this, but I think it's relatively straightforward, a power switch. Can be switched on off to enable, disable the connection between two power grids. We have enough to build it, so let's just get cracking. Can it go on walls? Nope. Oh, it can kind of go on certain things. Well, let's just leave it, like, right here. Oh, actually, our node is there, so let's just connect it here. I mean, ideally, you'd have this back at some main facility if you wanted to turn things on and off, I guess. So I'll just get rid of this pole. We'll pull this pole right out here. That's going to look weird. Uh, I guess just here, then. Snap that to the left, snap that to the right. Power switch is off. Ugh. Operational. We're burning. Ugh. We're off. Sweet. It does what it says on the tin. Nice. So there we go, we can switch on and off factories actually at will, at will now. Which is nice. The problem is, as soon as I was done building this factory, literally like two minutes later, power run out, ran, ran out. We're basically over our limit. So that's why the first thing we have on the list is to expand our power facility. But don't fret. Of course, one of the first things we did when we built that power facility is we left room for expansion. In fact, we left room to double the size of it. I built eight coal generators. We've got room for 16. I've got them all queued up in our to-do list. We have eight more on the list. I've got all the materials. I actually think I might grab some more reinforced plates though because we're going to need a lot of belts so I'll just make sure we have that real quick and uh, I was kind of thinking actually long term well it's, it's kind of long term I guess nothing is really ever set in stone to this game but the idea I had was that I could actually build a much taller power facility if we overclocked some of the coal nodes that we have there especially if we then build mark 2 miners on them because currently we just have mark one miners we have any room for this stuff we actually don't hmm what am i not going to need um let's just get rid of the those things I'll just take these instead all right cool but yeah i was thinking we could build out on the water and build a sort of a tall sort of coal generator that builds up and up and up because as you're going to see this place is just going to take up a huge amount of space and it's going to be blocking sort of traffic going through this area when we want to set up a transport network that being said once we unlock things in the 
space elevator, we're kind of into the oil situation. So maybe we don't need that much coal. I don't really know. I've never really gone that far. Also, speaking of going far, I built a hyper tube all the way out to the area because I was kind of running back and forth and checking where we're going to be built, uh, building. I kind of had a look and scouted out where there's going to be some quartz. Didn't run all the way up there, though. There's actually like, um, what's it called? Alien mobs blocking the ways. But I know roughly where it is on the map. So we can make our way out to it. Alright, here we are. Now what's going to be pretty fun about this is we could just hop off. And I built another hypertube that takes us straight down. And the one that goes downwards is a lot more fun. Because it goes a lot faster. <laughs> Alright, we're flying. I've also built those little um, transport things just to bounce us back up really quickly. Boom. There we are. Pooped out. Ready to go. So you may remember we have... Eight water extractors, four of them are online right now, feeding all the way up into our little pump house, of which two of the pipes are active, two of them are waiting to be expanded upon. And people mentioned, as you can see, sometimes those little lights in the distance flicker, and that's just because we are producing too much water, and people did mention that. I did my math, uh, well, a little bit wrong, kind of. My math actually does check out, but I overestimated how much I'd really need. Um, so we can actually cut down the amount if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. It's room. It's built for expansion. Like I said, we're just gonna be expanding it even more. So for now, I think it's all fine. Um, so the reason we went and got sulfur is so we could crack open a boulder like this, and we've done that, right? We have to get our novelisks. So in order to get those, we'll just build an equipment workshop, rotate it around, maybe just throw uh, biofuel on the floor for a minute. Let's just get a novelisk. Just need the one. Break open our novelist detonator, reload, toss it out. Check, obviously, for any animals. The bird is in the clear. I repeat, the bird is in the clear. Okay. Everyone's safe, everyone's happy. Okay. No need to be tagging PETA on Twitter or anything like that. We're fine. So, let's get ourselves the second miner. It's rotated around. So, we're still using Mark 1 miners. You know? Could go to Mark 2. Could get crazy. Could build this whole thing efficiently right now. But life is just too short sometimes. We're just going to double our power. That should be more than enough to build one more factory. That's going to give us access to quartz, which is up in that direction. In fact, do we have it on the map? No, we don't. I think it's somewhere, like, over here. That's where we're going to have to go. Oh my god, can't uh, type. Quartz. Stamp this. Boom. Large icon. Show me when it's near. Make it pink. Good to go, right? Quartz. So somewhere over there. I think it, there's two deposits like somewhere here. We did. I did a scan and it basically told me. And as far as I know, it's not up high, so it should be accessible. Oh, don't tell me. Okay. Oh, it's, it's further up than I thought. Okay. Well, that's where we're going to be adventuring to after we get this little place built. All right. So let's get cracking. We're going to basically just expand this power facility by building a duplicate side on the opposite side. We want this to come up fairly far and we want it to start roughly, I think, something like there. It's really awkward to build these things because they're so large. We have to look at the central point. But I think about there... Let me just check this out, where this is going to here. Uh, I think so? Yeah. So we need to match there. So that's going to be just to the right of this. You just need to make sure they line up. I don't know if I can even do that. Oh my god, it's such an awkward building. I can't get over how awkward that building is. So we basically need to come all the way out to about there. I might have to get up on a ladder or something, because it's really difficult to see. Yeah. Just like that. I think it's just like this. I think it can actually build a, be built a bit closer. Let's just bring it a bit forward. And I think that's lining up just now. Oh my god. Oh heavens, save me. I might have to get, I think I have to get up on a lookout tower. Even doing that, I feel like it's still going to be awkward, because you build it at the center, center point. Yeah, that side, right to it. But then I needed to come basically as close to the line as possible, right there. I think that's it. Yeah, that looks good to me. 
All right, and then we'll have splitters in the center. We might do the splitters first. Now, I actually brought with me a bunch of compacted coal so I can fill these up so we don't have any sputtering issues at the beginning. Um, so we'll see how that works. I haven't really tested that theory out, but I think if we fill them up, this should be good. One, two, and then we're going to be feeding it from the back, so like that. Okay. Something like that. So then we just build these in a line. Should be straightforward enough. One, two, and three. And then we just do the same on the other side. Hopefully not too close to the miner. I think we've left a decent amount of space. Yeah. Okay, nice. Looking good, looking good. Right, so we just slam all these down. Um, just to make life easier, let's go across like that. One, two, and in. All right, do that again over here. Just make sure we follow that line across. One, two. Man, I've got a bit of a Bob Ross cadence to me. I wish I spoke like him, that'd be so good. He'd say something, I don't know what he'd say, but something like, you know, you gotta have your little splitters, you gotta have four, you know, it's like creating four little belts, four little friends. There's your little friends. All going off in different directions. Just think of it as carrying your dreams, carrying your dreams into your various, uh, Carrying your hopes into your dreams. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. And that's why I'm not Bob Ross. All right. Let's go with Mark II. Rotate it around. But that's basically what he says. I've watched him a few times on Twitch. And he's like painting a, uh, yeah, a tree. And then he adds little other trees. And he's like, oh, these trees are like little friends. Just little friends. Give that tree some friends. He seems a little lonely up there. And then you're like, yeah, give him some friends. <laughs> All right, sweet. Okay. Oh, obviously, we'll put stilts on this. I ain't no immersion breaker. Um, but it's fine for now. That should be good. Okay. So we're going to bring the water pipes around, and then we got to power them on. Obviously. But I want to get the miners up and running first, and that way we can just fill the place. Um, and the reason I shut down the Caterium and the steel refinery and stuff is just so that we can power these on without any problem and get the power network up and running. And I'll run back and turn everything back on. Okay, um, so what's next? I guess, do we do the water pipes or do we feed these in? I guess we feed these in first, although I need to know where the water pipes come so I can build over them. I guess... Yeah, I guess they can't really... Whoops. Oh, that's silly. I guess really they can't come any further than just that little Audi point that I was looking at there. Really should get some railing on this place. It's an absolute death trap. Alright. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the pipes then. Let's just climb up here, maybe. We could do it from up here. That bird. That's absolutely just looking to die. Um, let's see if we go to logistics, and we can add this maybe as number five, and maybe this as number six. Ah, oh, I did the wrong number. So many days. That was transport. Number six was. That's an entrance, and that was a support. Okay, cool. Anyway, <clears throat> so number six. So we want to build it basically one, two. Uh, basically to there. One, two. All right, nice. That's basically what we need to do for the water. Now I can build the logistics of the actual uh, coal that's going to get fed in. So to do this, I guess we'll get a elevator straight away. And the elevator can go in a line here, but face that way and out. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll copy this. Well, really, we just need a regular one. To go like that. And then we just need a merger. So it's going to be a regular slow belt into that one. Slow belt into that one. And then a bit of a faster belt to take it, the combined 120 
into this. Nice, this is going quite neatly, I must say. <laughs> I expected a bit more problems in lining these things up, but we're good. So let's just hook all this up. Just throw in that compact coal. That's a hundred in there. Throw in a hundred in here. Throw in maybe 50 into this one. 50 into this one. And 25 into the two remaining. That's the way they all start, and then they'll start getting their other coal from the back first, if I have not made a mistake. Well, I've kind of made a mistake, but that's okay. We'll just, um... No, that's right, right? Everything has 25 at the very least. 25, 25. So these all have t 25, 25, and they have 50 and 100. Yeah. So these ones are backed up first. They'll get hit with all the coal first as well with the splitters. I think this will work. I haven't done this before, so apologies if this is all wrong. We'll see when it happens. Um, but I think it's correct. Or at least I don't think it's a big problem. All right, we just need to... I guess we can power on our drills now, even, just to get them started. So let's just connect something like this over here. Okay. And then we want to hook these up from the back. So I need to extend the foundations out just one tier. And that's what I was saying about this place. It's just, it just takes up so much space. So these are just big buildings. But I think you can build them on top of each other. Now it's messy to do that. You can certainly put them all in one straight line rather than building them op opposing each other like this. That's another way of doing it. But I think I can build them on top of each other. And I think we can build them closer to the water. Maybe even out on the water. Depends how much water we need. I'll have to think about it. But I think we could get at least... So we're going to have 16. I think we get at least 32 of these things at, when we double up the miners. And then I just need to figure out how much water we need and we can kind of build it tall. But like I said, it might be redundant. If oil is just going to completely replace this, then maybe we don't need to. Um, but I'll, you know, try to figure that out, I guess. Alright, let's just pop the water into these places. Let's get ourselves junctions that go in front. Did I power both of those on? Yeah. Good. By the way, um, apologies for missing a day of uploads. I'll make up for it with this one is coming out a day after it was supposed to. Uh, and that's because I was playing a game called Sweet Transit. Highly recommend it if you like logistics. It's all about trains, and I suck at that game, but it's kind of fun <laughs> to watch me fail. I think it's a great game. I'm just not very good with trains, but it's a, almost like a good little learning curve or learning experience, I guess, for trains to come in this game. Basically, I just struggle with signals a little bit. It just gets a bit complicated, and I don't know why. I did the tutorial, and it's really well explained, and it shows you signals, and it says, okay, Here's a junction. Here's a problem with a junction. Here's two signals. Figure out where they need to go to get it to work. And I did it, and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. But when you're... I guess you, like, overthink it or something, because when you're laying it all out, and then the trains get stopped and stuck, I'm like, what? Like, why? I don't understand what I've done wrong. Uh, and that just keeps happening to me. Now, it hasn't happened in the series so far, but I'm sure it will, um, because I've been keeping things really simple for the series, <laughs> just to make sure I don't mess things up too much. But it's getting to the point now where I have to complicate things because, you know, the network is growing. Uh, for those who don't know, don't know what the game is, is, just really quickly, it's basically like Anno, if you watch my Anno series. It's very similar to that game. But it's instead of delivering goods via sea, by these trade routes where the AI just kind of takes it from port to port really simply, you know, on the open sea you can go anywhere. Instead of doing that, you have to build railways to carry everything everywhere. So, it's kind of like Transport Fever. I actually think it's much more complicated than Transport Fever, even though it only uses one method of transport, just because the method it uses is so complicated. Everyone travels by rail, people and resources. All right, we're all good. We've set it all up. Lovely line that we can run underneath. Everything is, has their coal getting backed up, just so we can turn these things on. So now what we need to do is power on the pumps, and then the water will flow and these will turn on. But before we do that, we obviously have to hook them up with power themselves. So let's just... 
add a power line here. And just to continue along the way we've been doing it before. Oh, that was weird. Normally it would do this. Alright, so just hook those up. We do have the new mark uh, the new poles now, by the way, which can obviously feed seven machines. Or six machines. And one other connection point. So seven connection points in total. So we can clean up some wires in the future if we want to as well. Obviously people just use mods for that. Absolute cheaters. Not that I'm against mods or anything, but no mods in this playthrough. That way I think everyone's on the same page with learning the game. And then if we ever wanted to in the future, we could always mess around with some mods or something. Um, so just to keep things all looking the same, let's just paint these orange. I want to paint my junctions orange, which is the way I've done it over on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Paint the machines. I'm happy with the junctions and everything looking different. That's okay. This just keeps this the look and feel of the place the same. All right, let's just jump up here real quickly. So that's that is a duplicate of what I've done on the other side. That is a duplicate. So it looks good. It just needs everything to turn on now. Everything's hooked up. It just needs to actually get its water, and then everything will turn on. So in order to give it its water, we just have to go to, down to our lovely little pump house. Alright, those pumps will turn on, but water isn't actually being fed up here yet. We still have to run down and actually feed the the water, extra, turn them on. Because that power demand is the reason I turned the factory off. I saw that we were using biomass for the overflow, and I was like, oh no. So these ones are hooked up, right? Yep, they're all hooked up. So it's just these things. Everything's all laid out for us. Because of my excellent planning. All right, that should be it. That should be water slowly but surely pumping all the way back up. We'll follow it and just watch the smokestacks rise. So we won't see these things pumping until the water actually gets there, right? They're not pumping just yet. I've noticed actually that before when power died on me, the pumps slowly power on based on the water that gets fed into them. So if you're only pumping a little bit of water, you'll see them only rise and fall just a small amount. It's just one of those things that I think is kind of cool. It's a nice little extra detail for the animations. So we see that it's churning along now. And look at that, see the tiny little pumps? Just tiny little pumps compared to these ones. And that'll just build up and up and up as the water pipes fill. So that's just cool. I just thought that was cool. That's worth showing off. We're getting a little bit of movement now. We can see the things are expanding out. That's cool. And people told me that the colors on the inside are blue because it's what it's carrying. It's carrying water. Um, and the yellow color we had many episodes ago, that was just like a little glitch. There we go. We're burning. It's going to kind of kick on and off, I guess, as the water gets fed in, but it should be okay. It's just the water that's the problem, right? I think. So let's just check the power pole. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we go. We can see boom, 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 boom. And it's going up and up and up and up. Excellent. So that is expanding the power facility. Done. Easy. <laughs> Absolutely easy. Beautiful. All right, cool. So that's going to give us the power we need to now go and expand to create the quartz mine. The quartz refinery, I should say. So, very quickly, I'm going to run back and power on all the machines that I've powered down. Because this should be enough power to carry everything. Look at it go. The capacity is now 1480 megawatts. Our consumption, our max consumption is only half that. So I should be able to turn back on the steel refinery, but it's quite the distance. I have to run all the way back to the Caterium, hook them up to steel, and that should power on sulfur automatically. So those two just need to be powered back on. I'll gather any other things I need to bring with me for what we need to do with the quartz up here, and then we'll go explore. Okay. See you on the other side.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back from my trip around our various factories. I've powered them all back on, gathered as much materials as I can to take with us to build up this quartz refinery. And it is the dead of night right now as we're going to be venturing deeper into the jungle to see what horrors lie in wait for us. But I have come prepared. I have our rebar gun, our nobelisk detonator, a medical inhaler, and a xenobasher. So we can deal with creatures like this. Now, I thought it was worth mentioning, when I came back here, we'd already burned through all of the compacted coal, and it's starting to get fed its regular coal now, but basically it's sputtering like I kind of thought it might do. I was kind of just hoping on a wing and a prayer that the compacted coal thing would build up enough on the belts that it would keep it going, but it wasn't enough. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but it's quite interesting to see how much power we are consuming right now. Essentially, our max consumption level of all the factories and facilities that we have, if they were to power on, will be 1,241 megawatts. And the capacity of our network is 1,480 if everything stays online. So we should be about 200 above what we need, but I'm going to be adding 16 extra constructors to this network. I think they're only like, what are they, four in power each? Yeah, it's only four megawatts, so they're not too bad, but the miners could be a little bit stressful. And we're really right at the edge of needing to advance even... What the hell is just a... Has the moon just appeared? It's a giant moon, by the way. Yeah, where's that light in the sky gone? I don't know. It's all gone anyway. Oh, it's behind the thing. There it is. It's behind the space elevator. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Let's just get going. I'm pretty much ready to go now. That actually looks so cool, the silhouette of the space elevator behind the, um... I guess the larger moon that's rotating around. Alright, let's get going. So basically, I'm hoping that the network is going to hold. And I was just kind of surprised to see... That, you know, adding eight more generators, doubling the power that we have effectively, still is only scratching the surface of enough to keep us going for the next few machines. So that's why we need to get to the next power source pretty soon. Now you might be looking at the various power poles and wondering, when did I do that? I basically went this far and encountered these guys and then I was like, you know what, let's just fight them. Or I basically decided I didn't want to go any further. They're so glitchy. It's not even really a challenge. Is that other one going to come back? No, I guess not. Alright, fine. But I left this one here just to remind me. This is where it ends. Don't forget to bring your poles with you. So, we need to go keep it to the wall to the left and just keep hugging this wall and I think that will take us around to it. Got these weird fungal sacks. <laughs> which we got mycelia from before, I guess, if you wanted to get more of that and make fabric. I believe there are alternate recipes for fabric out in the wild. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, I'm panicking. There we go. What is up with the AI? I mean, they're just, like, not even reacting at the moment. Anyways, let's just take that with us. Where were we? I keep pressing number two to take out my second item, but obviously that's not how it works. Let's see if we can just handle this one. Not the most graceful way to go, but you know, it had to be done. I strongly advise you to harvest this specimen. Oh, well, I bet you do. Alright, we should be nearly there. Let me just do a quick scan. I've got a bit of distance to go yet. Yeah, up and around. Okay. Should be in here. Oh my god. Hey, our first sign of quartz. There's some right there. You have the hatchery thing over there. I don't have any space in my inventory at all. I actually don't. I can't even pick anything up here. I'll come back and get that then later, that quartz. We don't need it. We're going to a quartz mine anyway. What is this? Water pier. Alright. These are like little geysers. Yeah, I found one before. Or geysers. I found one before further out. I didn't know there was more like that it's around this way. I wonder what you need water for over here. It's 
So there it is. There's the quartz deposits. We can see them. I'd like to just kind of build it up on top of that if I could. It would look kind of nice, I think. I guess I'll just attach it to there. Alright, that's power. We just, just need to get power out to this area. Boss fight. Oh, missed them. The drop. I don't know how powerful he's going to be, but he doesn't look too bad. I'm so sorry. I feel bad. They're not even really reacting. Oh, down he goes. Four splitter remains. All right, here we are. Not enough space to pick up the rock quartz. That's fine. Oh, there's another one. Let's just deal with him really quickly, and then we'll get started. Oh, we have vines. We can find up there. Oh. <gasps> a purple one. I haven't found one of those yet. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get that. So let's just make a quick little box here in the corner. Let's dump something into here. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I'll put these... Uh, just things that we're probably not going to use. Alright, cool. Actually, I do need the portable miners. So we'll take them. Let me just grab those spitter remains. Let's clear them off the ground, and we can use that for biofuel or something later. Is that all four? Yeah. Oh man, what a journey. Alright, has our map updated? We're still in the shadows. What's up with that? I guess because we're underneath a cave, maybe you have to get to the top to clear it. So let's see, I think you can climb this. I've climbed vines before. Sounds kind of like a ladder. Oh, we're so close to it. And we could just build a ladder, but... What is this, by the way? Limestone? Yeah. Let's go this way. I think we can just walk over. Whoops. Hey, there's some Caterium here. Oh, can I make it? Let's see. Nailed it. Oh my god. Oh no, 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 no. Ah. Alright, we'll get it later because people have said um, you want to get Blade Runners and you can jump further. Now I just missed. I missed the jump, so that's fine. But we'll get Blade Runners and that'll make it a little bit easier. Right, let's just get started laying down the foundations of this. I'm so sorry to miss that. Let everyone down. Build this right across here. Thankfully, they're both on the same plane, so it should be relatively straightforward. So my plan with this is, I was kind of looking up the amounts for quartz, which was, I think, to have eight constructors for each miner that we have at Mark II level. Now, that wasn't based off what other people have done or anything, but I just looked on the wiki, the amounts that they make silica, and the amounts that they make quartz crystal. And I worked out that that would be kind of nice to feed them both on the same belt, because they actually have... In the, the recipes are quite interesting because they sort of work together. I'll show you what I mean. Let's just get this set up. So which direction do we want this to face? Um, I want one facing left, I think. Like that. And then I want the other one facing the opposite direction. If I could find it. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Two miners hooked up. So we need some space on this side. Whoops. It's at the same time as an autosave. And he tripped me up. Nearly goddamn killed me. I don't know. Do we have to raise this? It looks like ah, uh, looks like we kind of do. I wonder could we get away with like just like not raising it? Um, hmm. Or could we get away with raising this by one and bringing everything up to level five, even the miner? I don't know. Try it. 
It might work. Sometimes this works. Four is usually the max amount, but sometimes you can go five. It depends on the layout of the terrain. And if you just aim at the actual ore. Yes, it works. It works. Oh, by the way, yeah, there's a waterfall here that just hangs in the air. Saw a screenshot of that. Ooh, we have boulders up there. We could clear that area. Go through there, maybe. I don't know where that goes. No idea. That'd be fun. We have black powder with us, actually. We could do that. All right. Let's just extend this out as well. And then we've got our foundations in place. Pretty straightforward. So what are these miners going to be doing? 100, 240 quartz per minute. Raw quartz. Boom. And they're going to need to be fed into an area of eight constructors, I think. So let's get ourselves a lookout tower. We can start working from up here. Okay. Question is, how far in does it have to go? Probably can stay pretty close to this area. I don't think that, that really matters too much. So maybe this will be the line of where we have our belts. Yeah. So the next line could be the one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Production. So let me just see. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that leaves a gap either side. Perfecto. All right. Um, maybe even just push this to there. That's a good halfway mark, I think. Can't quite get there without jumping over, I think. So this is what people told me to do, which is build walkways. So just while we're building, I guess this makes it a bit easier for us, eh? Game changer. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Eight. Eight just like that. So now um, we'll just have to set up... Again, this is going to be manifold because <clears throat> life is just easier with that. So we'll just set up splitters. I can hear a creature, by the way. Scary. All right. So something like this is going to be feeding this one in from the left. That's 240. Remember, we can do 270 if we overclock. So this one is going to go up to another floor. So we don't need to do that now. Well, we do, but I mean like... um. We don't need to hook it up with belts right now. We'll just get the walls laid down. Basic wall here. One, two, three, four, whatever. So three, a height of three. And then it's going to need its own foundations, just like we've just done here. Big old concrete box. Something basically like that. And then we're going to just copy what we've done on the bottom, which is another eight. And that'll be 16 in total that we've just made. So let's grab these. We know that it was at the halfway mark. So it's like there. One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll just build this out a bit further as well. God, that has made things a lot easier. Props to the people that told me to do that. Okay, cool. So yeah, so we basically just need to feed this up, and then we just need to lay out our splitters again, but in the... Oh, are you kidding me? I just built them the wrong way around. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I always do that. Did I just get... All right, we'll just rotate that. Just copy them out again. Why can't I just zoop constructors, eh? Wouldn't that be the thing to do? I need to add one more just over here. Okay. Let's just rotate that last one around, connect all these splitters, and then we'll just hook everything up, power everything on, and that should be pretty much it. And uh, this will all feed into two big boxes or into an awesome sink, depending on how we want to do it. Uh, so yeah, we want it to come in this way. Let's do that. And we actually haven't even unlocked the recipes yet. So hopefully I have done this right. I haven't double-checked it in-game. But I think the amounts will work out in our favor. Let's do that again. There we go. So we're going to need this to come up. 
Maybe a conveyor floor hole or something. Could do it for us. Yep. So just to make things look kind of nice and even. Oh my god, it's actually lined up perfect. This is going to be great. Check this out. So we'll pop the hole right there. We're going to get a lift. Our best lift that we have. Uh, that last one just needs to turn, I guess. That's okay. All right, cool. Let's just hook this all up. Number six. Straight in. Lovely straight line. And then I'll just hook up the mom and see exactly what these machines are going to be taking. Because we have, actually haven't unlocked the recipe to take these to take what we're going to be popping in there. Yeah. So let's just do that up here. We can just we don't have to jump down. But I'll have to just grab a bit of quartz myself. So quartz. So to get quartz, we need 20. And then we need another 20 here. So let's just do that. Hop down here. We'll just grab 40. Obviously, I could just power on the machine, I guess. But I've committed to it now. You're going to watch a man hack at a purple rock until it, the number hits 40, okay? We've all agreed that this is what's going to happen, and no one's going to skip this part. If you didn't skip it, write balls in the comments. <laughs> Alright, good. I bet some people still skipped and heard me say that. I said it too late into it. Alright, here we go. Let's go up. Maybe climb the correct ladder next time. That'd be good. Oh, no. Oh, it works. Totally good. All right, here we go. Into the mump. Let's get our research for quartz. So that's going to unlock quartz crystal and new products. Don't actually know what the products are. I think glass and some other things are probably going to unlock for us. Silica is next. Cool. So those are the two things I've planned for. What do we need here? Oh, cool. I've got modular frame. We can get this done. We can get Blade Runners today. We can even get a crystal oscillator, which I don't even know what that is. And shatter rebar. Almost like a shotgun, is it? Possibly. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is maybe say all of these. So yeah, this is the interesting thing. Five raw quartz comes in and produces 37.5 per minute. So we get 30... Sorry, I read that wrong, but you know what I mean. 37.5 raw quartz, and we output 22.5 quartz... Excuse me, crystal. If we just rotate this around to silica... The numbers get flipped. So what we can do is on each floor, let's say 30, let's say 22.5 is needed. 22.5 times eight is 180. So it's not quite what we were able to feed, right? We we're able to feed up here 270. 37.5 times eight is too much. It's 300. But we can we can balance this. So if we go how many of these do we need? Four? Let me just do this real quickly. Four times 37.5 is 150. So that's 150. And then four times 22.5 is 90. That's 240. That's the number. So we got four of them due each. And that way we balance each floor to have 240. And we don't even have to overclock these. I thought I did, but I don't. Sweet. All right, so that's my logic. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So if we had all eight doing just one thing, the floor would be either short or too much. But if we put four doing one thing and four doing another thing and have each floor being split between the two, and that way we're going to have what's called a sushi belt. And that's why I want to use my smart splitter to then divide the output back out. Now we could just sort that out here, but it's fun to use a sushi splitter. Why not? <laughs> all right. So, what is everything needed? So, well, let's set these to be silica. So, four silica, right? So, we'll start from this side, I guess. One, we'll just copy this. Two, three, and four. And then this will be quartz crystal. Copy that. Paste that there. Paste that there. And there. And these are all taking less than 60 in. So, we'll use our crappy belt, our standard belt, to bring these in.
Nailed it. All right, cool. So that's all hooked up. Everything has what it needs. We could power the first ones on, I guess, and then just work on the bottom tier. Just so we can get the ball rolling and see some cool action. Um, I'm not too sure how I'm going to feed power upstairs, but to be lazy, I'm just going to drop a power pole like down on the edge. That'll do the floor below or something as well. So we need to bring power from over there. Yeah, how do I bring power up a floor? I usually use the floor, uh, the wall outlets, but whatever. So just bring one to here, bring this over. Like I said, I'll clean this up probably in between, but just to, I just want to get the machines online. So we need to do the same on the bottom and also hook this up to its elevator. So our quartz miner has power. We need the fastest thing we have. So bring that down, rotate it around, say come in. Add a six belt in. Oh, don't do that to me. Really? It's almost perfect. How could you do that to me? Oh, it's I actually built that wrong. It's going to get even worse, though, I think, because it has to come even closer. But I think it was a little off. Oh, yes. <laughs> 240 per minute. Two forty per minute. This belt can hold nine. Uh, Two seventy. Why is it go? Why is it ever chugging at all? Did I build the wrong elevator? I did. There we go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Power. All right. Great. So that's going to produce our silica. It's going to produce everything we need. And then we can get those blade runners with fifty, and then we can go up and get that purple slug. So the port quartz refinery. We're almost done. We just have the top floor done now. And then we have to obviously have to build the uh, bottom half of it, like bring everything out. So let's just mirror what we've got on the top on the bottom. So what are we going to need? We're going to need, we've got all the splitters in place. Let's just hook up everything with the, so I'm just going to run down the very center here and we'll just back up and put all of these things in. It's probably the easiest way of doing it first. That way we don't have to jump constantly. Much easier to do it this way. And then we have to set everything in the inverse order. We could match what's on top, actually. Yeah, I guess we could just match what's on top, because it does come from the opposite angle, actually, this time around, so that's good. So, what was on top? It was silica first, so we'll start with quartz crystal on the... Yeah, actually, no, we'll start with silica then here. Yeah, sorry. That way we can keep everything together. Alrighty, there we go. So that is powered on. So now we are at 480 quarts per minute, and we should be consuming 480 quarts per minute, tossing out 37.5 times 8. So 37.5 times 8. It's going to be 300 silica per minute, and then it's t the opposite is 22.5 times 8. 180 quarts crystal per minute. That's what this place should be doing. 16 constructors. So we just have to hook all this up with power, of course, as well. And then we need the output. And then we're done. Um, so let's go one there. Alright, there we go. Everything should be powered on now. Yep, there we go. They're all getting their stuff. So now we just need to build our copious amounts of mergers <laughs> on the bottom floor and the top floor. And then uh, filter it in a smart splitter, because our belt can handle everything that this is going to be churning out. So let's pop it along here. Right, so I built like an industrial container here, and all of this should flow out into this. So I think what I need is a smart splitter. Uh, hmm. Yeah, right about here, I think. And then we'll tell this that its center point has to be... 
uh, I guess silica, it doesn't really matter, one or the other, it doesn't really matter. And then to the right will be the quartz crystal. And then what we're going to also need is a merger straight in front of it. Yeah, so we won't really get to see the split. I guess that's kind of a little lame, maybe. I don't know. But we'll see the box filling up with the right thing, at the very least. Okay, so the idea there would be all of this line is going to feed here, go into this, smart split silica straight into this box, and then we're going to have another line that's going to come in that feeds silica, smart split silica into there as well. And then quartz crystal will come out the other side. So, um... I'm not really too sure if I've done this correctly, but some, I guess another bit of a gap across. I'll choose that this is going to be where the quartz crystal goes. And we'll do something else with these in future, probably send them into an awesome sink or something, but it's just to get the ball rolling on all of it. I keep saying that a lot, I don't know why. But anyway, uh, let's just hook all these up, get them flowing. Then we have to bring the top floor down to the bottom floor. Obviously, we want everything coming out into one box. That'll be the idea. Okay, so the output is really low, so we can just do... I think I'll just do what I did before, which is back up, start from the back and work forward. So there we go, quartz crystal coming out of these four. And we can send all of this into the MAM and do our research. There we go, we can see the silica pile again. And there we go, so the belt is super messy. And it gets merged and goes into here, and then it's obviously getting backed up because we're not sending this anywhere. So this needs to come out. And just for now, I'll just send that in there. So that should be... Hey, it's not doing it. Hmm. So silica did go in there, but quartz hasn't... Oh, sorry, it's raw quartz, that's why. Quartz crystal. There we go. Nice. So there we go. We've created one floor where a smart splitter is now dividing just this, like, little line of both. So it all should flow really nicely, just once it gets rid of some of that backlog. Shouldn't see, shouldn't see any stoppage or stopping, because we know that the amount on this belt, like I said before, is less than two... It's 240 exactly. So it's just the little bit of backlog, I think, that's causing that. So I'm just going to turn this off just really quickly. Put the power down. Just let the machines do what they're doing. And then we want to see them flowing, like, really nicely. Um, so the other idea, then, would be to... Hmm. Actually, I'm just thinking where this might be an issue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a second output. That's the goal, right? To feed into the second output, the other quartz. Yes. So this would have to come up two layers. So we actually didn't need a merger there. Don't need a merger there. This can just be a straight up belt that comes in. Yeah, and the higher raised bit can come in from the top. Yeah, that'll work out fine. So we do get to see the split. Looks a little bit nicer that way. All right, cool. Um, yeah, let's just make our way back upstairs and do the same up there and basically feed it into elevators that go down. Right, so let's just block this out. It's actually a really nice even number. It's 10 across, which is nice. And eight, yeah, eight constructors in the middle, one gap either side. Worked out very well. So what we'll need to do here is basically just set up our elevators. They need to be fast elevators. They need to come around like this, and they need to be any inputs. Seems like it's a little off, is it? Up seems a bit too high, though. Uh, maybe not. I guess what we could do is even have a wall output. I guess it is lined up the way it should be. Don't, don't know if I'll need the wall output, but anyway, let's just do that again here. So we know that this is a silica box. So we'll just set up all the mergers again and then create a smart splitter that determines which way it goes. So let's do the smart splitter first. Smart splitter, there it is, in the middle spot. Right. Center point is going to be... Oh, can you actually search? Oh, that's really good. I just didn't even realize you could do that. Anyway, yeah, so we just go silica. And then this one is going to be... 
quartz crystal. Nice. Okay. Let's bring that along. Alright, so that's done. And then this one, done. That's why the industrial storage things are so cool, because they have two inputs. So if you're limited by your mergers and limited by your, you know, your belt speed, not really a problem. <coughs> okay, so should we get this on? Yeah, we need this to be pretty close. There we go. Okay, there we go. So we should see everything getting split. It's going to take a while for it to come down. So I'm just going to do what I did before, which is turn off that miner. Let the machines kind of empty all out. And then turn them back on. That should just keep the belts looking really good. <laughs> it's important, okay? In fact, we just throw in the rest of that quartz in there. And we can head down to our boxes now. These are still pressing, which is crazy. So we just head down here and activate our mam. Now that we have lots of silica, lots of quartz coming in. Silica, look at this. Look at this. All right, 200, 400. That should be more than enough. What do we have in here? A couple hundred. All right, so in the special category, we have our month. Activate that. Go to quartz. Blade runners. Nailed it. We also have inflated pocket dimension, six extra inventory slots. I'd love to see it. Oh, we're so close to getting the car. The Explorer. We need crystal oscillators. Unfortunately, I think they're made in a machine I don't have access to, actually. I think so. I'll have a look into it in between episodes, but I don't think I can make them that, that easily. Radar technology, radio signaling, pulse novelist. I don't even know what any of this stuff is for. But there we go, we finally got the Blade Runner, so we have to actually make our first batch. Blade Runners. Alright, nice. We happen to have what we need for them, so that's good. Okay, let's strap them to our feet. It's marginally faster. <laughs> People were saying to get these for ages, they're not that good. So that's how fast I run normally. Let's time it. Let's do a little game, okay? I'll start here. And we have to run to... Um, I guess I'll just put something down in the way. So we put this down right there, okay? So I'm just going to bump into it. Actually, I won't bump into that. Let's put something down I will bump into, like just a standard splitter. Okay? There it is. Three, two, one, go! One, two, three... So maybe about four seconds, maybe about four seconds. Let's see how much better it is now. This isn't the most comprehensive test, but you know. Okay, three, two, one, one, two, three. Okay, so it's like, you know, maybe 25, 33% faster. Now it also, yeah, it gives us extra jump, doesn't it? That's what it says. Sprint faster and jump higher. Okay. Well, there we go, we have it now. So, uh, yeah, let's go get that power slug, and then we can activate it in the mum again. I'm waiting for these machines to empty out. So let's just see if I can do this now without failing. Actually, just really quickly before I do. Got to do it. Take it off. Done. God, this is slow. I don't know why it's so slow. <laughs> We've actually kind of done our mom research now as well, anyway. It's raining inside the... Inside the cave. So this is where I slipped last time. Nailed it. Alright, good. Should be pretty straightforward from here. <laughs> Uh. All right, we made it. Purple slug. First time getting one, actually. Love to see it. Look how backed up our machines still are. It's crazy. This is gonna. That uh, doesn't really help the fall damage that much. Um, it would be good to also blow that open. Do we have? 
I have the equipment workshop. We'll just make another obelisk again. Maybe blow that open, see what's going on in there. I don't really have the time left in the episode to explore if we want to do the other things, though. Let's just see. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just get five of those. We'll hop across. Throw some knobs. It actually looks like I can just go straight through. Yeah, I can. Ooh, it's kind of creepy. Floating rocks. It's raining, but I don't hear it anymore. I'm in an unstable environment. There's another purple slug over there. Right, so I think for this you need like a radiation suit or something, right? Or a hazard suit, gas mask, something like that. Oh, there's spiders out there as well. Yeah, we'll back off from this. But Oh, man, it's gone very eerie indeed. And I think that's the Minecraft music as well. <laughs> Alright, let's just go back. Let's blow up these rocks anyway, because, you know, it's fun. We don't cause a cave-in. All right. Cool. Okay, so are we good to power these machines back on? Almost. I think maybe the one on the bottom floor can go back on. All right, look at that for belt speed. Now obviously there's a little gap because we could be doing 270, we're only doing 240. I mean, I, maybe I could overclock it and add another machine to each level, but I think it, I'm happy enough with how it is. Worked it out so that eight machines work, so I'm happy. And uh, yeah, we're still producing silica and quartz, nice. So let's just go up to the top floor one more time. I'll probably wrap this in, um, actually what we could do right now is... Yeah, just open up the map, let's get that purple slug. But also, we could check the awesome shop to see what's available for us now. Power slugs, there we go. Oh no, I don't have um, what we need for it, actually. We need... Yeah, we just need a little bit more stuff. Oh well, we can get it later. I thought you just needed to hand in a purple slug. Have I got one before? Maybe I did. Oh no, it requires one slug and other things. Yeah, okay, okay, fair enough. Alright, well anyway, that mom research is done, what we could do. We need to go to the space elevator and finally just package up all their stuff and send it. And then we'll activate the next tier, and then I can have time in between episodes to look at the tiers and see what we need to do. Look at this, it's cool. You can see it where it rains and where it doesn't, even though, know, you know. <laughs> but it's still cool. Alright, um, so yeah, the space elevator is next. Awesome shop, we'll just quickly have a look. Welcome back. So we've unlocked new things, I'm assuming architecture? Not really. Attachments. Nope. Walls. So now we have steel framed windows. And what do they require? They require silica and steel. Three tickets. Windowed walls. And I guess that's it. So we have the full frame window, single frame, frame window, panel frame, and reinforced windows. Nice. I assume that's probably it. Glass roof. Unavailable still. You need fix it roofs and silica in the MAM. So we have to do more with the silica tree maybe. Oh no, I haven't got fixed roofs yet, that's why. Oh yeah. There's lots of stuff to get still. I need to start building up tickets. So I'm going to start running around and placing around awesome things in these various places so that we can start. Because all of this is just going into a box and then nothing's going to happen with it. So um, it would be good to do something with it. So let's turn this one on now as well. Just get everything flowing again. Uh, and I might be a little bit crazy. Very last thing is to just build another mom. Did I actually do the silica stuff? Oh yeah, we need more rebar, and we could get the shadow rebar. And that's it then, I guess. Like, I have the quartz... Yeah, I meant to say quartz, sorry, the quartz crystal. We did just unlock this, yeah, the oscillator. Alright, cool. So I'm gonna make a quick dash back to home base. Um, now that this place is basically running flawlessly. Smart splitters away. We should see... There we go. Nice and... Cleanly dividing things up. Flowing nicely. Perfect, right? Basically. Almost perfect. Alright, I'm going to run back to base. Let's get everything we need for the space elevator phase. Don't look under there. And we should be good to go. 
Alright guys, here we are yet again in the dead of night at the space elevator and basically I'm just feeding it with all of the materials it's going to need. So that's of course 500 smart plating, 500 versatile framework and 100 automated wiring. And it's all just coming out of a box that I piled everything into. Fun fact, we had actually completely backed up production of Versatile Framework. That was completely done. Smart plating was almost backed up fully in its box. And automated wiring is almost all is also almost backed up. So these things were nearing the max amount we could have, which is like around a thousand or whatever. So we're dumping half of that in here. It's gonna take a little bit a little while, so I might just let time play or fast forward until we get done with it. Everything's still being fed in there. There's no reason, by the way, to split it. I just thought it would look kind of cool. But of course, it just sends out one item at a time anyway, so it's kind of pointless. But I thought it was kind of cool. Left is smart plating, middle is versatile frames, and the right was the automated wiring, which we just have about 50 left at the moment. So I'm just going to wait for that to kind of tick down. We'll pack it all up, send it up, and then quickly take a look at what we've unlocked in the next milestone. And then that'll be it for this episode. All right, guys, I think that's it. I think it's full of everything. Yes, sir. All right, let's load it. Well, it's loaded up. Let's seal it up. It's going to unlock tier five and tier six. Space elevator, eight of, blah, blah, blah. Space elevator resource delivery two. Bah, sent. I'll let the game do the talking. Right, there we go. That's um, 34 hours of work <laughs> sent off. Let's uh, just bounce up here, access our hub, and see what we've got in store for us. Oh yeah, this is where I was making the AI limiters. Forgot about that. How many did we get? 22 more. Okay, cool. All right, here we are, the hub. So here we go, tier 5 and tier 6. The first thing listed for us is oil processing. We've seen some things related to plastic, circuit boards, petroleum coke, fuel, oil extractors, refineries. Oh my god. Not the worst though, we only need motors to get this unlocked. Starts messing around with it. Industrial manufacturing then, the manufacturer, the big chonky building that takes four inputs to make stuff. A truck. I actually don't think I've seen that, looks pretty cool. Computer, modular engine, and adaptive control unit. Alternative fluid transport. Yeah, I haven't seen any of this. This is all new to me. Packaged water, packaged heavy oil residue. Hey, the gas mask. That's what we can use to get through those areas, I guess. That'll be good. What does it require? Rubber. Imagine that. Expanded power infrastructure, fuel generators, conveyor belt Mark IV, 480 resources per minute find criteria more. <laughs> Luckily we found that already. Transports up to 480 for the lift. Jetpack. Oh nice. Oh yeah, we can build in the air. Good. Monorail. There we go. So not till tier 6 now do we get trains. That's a long way off. I feel like. We need heavy modular frames. I've heard a lot of people say that's quite difficult to make. Steel pipes, encased beams, screws, and modular frames. That doesn't seem that bad to me. <laughs> we'll see if I eat my words. So maybe we need a lot of it. That could be the problem. Cool. And then Pipeline Engineering Mark II. Those are the next two tiers. <sighs> I'm going to be crying a lot of tears trying to work all this out because it's new territory for me. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing. That's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.